One player turned towards me and asked, you know, are you going to kneel, Jonathan? And I said, fellas, I'm, I'm not going to kneel and I'm not going to wear that T-shirt. And that was, a, that was the day before it happened. During the summer of 2020, protesters took to the streets after the killing of George Floyd. On July 31st, the NBA returned from COVID lockdowns. Like other NBA teams, the Orlando Magic players knelt in protest. Magic forward Jonathan Isaac stood alone. Afterwards, Jonathan faced backlash on social media and from reporters. Uh, do you believe that Black Lives Matter? Absolutely. I believe that Black Lives Matter. Um, a, lot, a lot went into my decision, and, and part of it is, first off, um, it's is, is my thought that, you know, kneeling or wearing a Black Lives Matter t-shirt um, don't go hand in hand with supporting Black Lives. Everything that, 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 that plagues us as a society, I feel like the answer to it is, is the gospel. Jonathan is the author of a new book, Why I Stand, detailing his faith journey and standing for what he believes in. His confidence in his convictions might come as a surprise to those who knew him as a boy. Jonathan Judah Isaac was raised in church in the Bronx. However, after his parents divorced, Jonathan moved to Florida with his mother. Coming from Bronx, New York, a predominantly black community to Naples, Florida, a predominantly white community, different is exactly what I was. That was the first time that I started to develop a sense of anxiety and really self-awareness that I was different from the other kids and I wasn't fitting in. And so that, that led me towards basketball and the girls started to talk to me. The guys wanted me to be on their team. And so that drove me to put every single ounce of you know time and practice that I could into basketball. His game improved through high school and Jonathan captured the attention of college scouts. Still, he had an intense fear of failure. I always just felt insignificant and, and, and always having to work for somebody else's approval or somebody else's love. The hard work paid off. Jonathan accepted a full scholarship to play at Florida State University. However, his anxiety followed him on campus. When you get to Florida State, by all accounts, you had a great season. But behind the scenes, sometimes you would barely even hold it together. Right. Why was that? I had several, several moments at Florida State of like passing out of, of just, you know, having panic attacks and anxiety attacks and not really being able to diagnose them until the coaches found out and, and, and we kind of dealt with it to where I was taking anxiety medication to practice and to play. After only one season in college, the Orlando Magic selected Jonathan in the first round of the NBA draft, the sixth pick overall. What should have been a night of celebration to Jonathan felt even more like an opportunity to fail. Everybody else that was there almost felt like they, they expected to be there. They expected the night to go the way they wanted it to. But for me, it was just passing, passing me by, you know, because of that same, you know, fear and anxiety that was going on the inside of me. While Jonathan's nagging anxiety continued, something else happened his rookie season. A teammate invited him to a chapel service. The pregame message challenged Jonathan's thinking in a very profound way. And the chaplain started the message, and so he quoted Luke 6:46 that says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? And the verse like hit me, like just a ton of bricks. And so I, I just started to reflect on that verse, you know, even in the game at night times and thinking to myself, that's me. His spiritual life was further challenged when he met Dr. Hepburn, a pastor who began discipling him. I looked at him, I could tell you how to be great. And I know that God can lead, up, lead us all into our greatness. What was his response to you? <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan responds, I already know Jesus. Oh, I did. <laughs> and he kept it moving. He, but he didn't know Jesus. No. He didn't know him. He was doing his thing. Over time, their friendship helped Jonathan consider a relationship with Jesus. After an injury his rookie season, Dr. Hepburn prayed. So I'm thinking to myself, I've never heard anybody pray like that. Uh, I get home that night and I hadn't knelt down at the side of my bed since I had been in Orlando at all. But I knelt down and I was like, God cares about me. And that was something that was so big for me because I was so used to working for love, working for acceptance, working for attention to where I was like, I know that I had nothing to do with all of these coincidences and circumstances, but somebody had to be looking out for me. Jonathan gave his heart to God. With the help of his mentor, Dr. Hepburn, he began growing in his faith. But the anxiety didn't go away after that. How are you better equipped to deal with it? He would always talk about um, speaking the word and, and, and saying it out of your mouth so your ears could hear it, um, uh, developing your relationship with Christ. I think for me, 
The thing that helped me and is still helping me, you know, conquer anxiety time and time again is uh, uh, being able to look back on these small moments of when I did choose to fight, I did choose to stand, I did choose to, um, even though I was afraid to do it anyway, and seeing that God was there for me in those moments, um, that has helped me to, if I come against another moment like that, I'm like, you know what, I know that God has me. This season, Jonathan's goal is to stay healthy and take the magic back to the playoffs. Even more than that, under the microscope of fans and media, Jonathan's focus is no longer on himself and his anxieties, but on others. I want to be an advocate for, you know, the people who, who do struggle with anxiety and fear and, and, and give them a blueprint that you can defeat it and you can combat it with the word of God, with the love of God and, and with having the right people around you. I think the biggest thing for me that I wanted people to see from the book is to get that for me, it was a journey. I, I didn't come to, you know, having this, you know, one courageous moment just because I developed that courage right then and there. It was a process. And uh, to really just put Christ on display that it's, it's evidence that he really can transform your life because he's done that for me. Uh, I want my, my MBA career to just be a platform for Christ.